And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Mile High Stadium on a glorious Sunday afternoon. Today, the AFC Championship game with the visiting New York Jets against the world champion, Denver Broncos. Jets fans have waited for the return to yesteryear. They have waited through years of mediocrity and ridicule, and they hope that the wait is over. They're betting on Mr. January, a.k.a. Bill Parcells, and they're betting that the coach will show them the way. That is good. Pressure on, and they block it. Blake Spence, it might be Blake Spence, who came up the middle. And the Jets recover it inside the Denver one-yard line. And now a chance for New York in a game that is the weirdest game we've seen all year to really take advantage. Testaverde takes the snap, the pitch to Martin running left. He's to the touchdown line. Across the line, touchdown. Touchdown, New York Jets. Curtis Martin. The New York Jets were less than 30 minutes away from a trip to Super Bowl 33. They had shocked the experts all season. And in their first conference championship game in 16 years, they were shocking them again. The Jets held a 10 to nothing lead in the third quarter and had victory within their grasp. But Bill Parcells' young team saw its hopes and its season slip away with a series of mistakes that swung the game in Denver's favor. The clock strikes midnight for the New York Jets. The season is over for Bill Parcells and his New York Jets. It was the end of the Jets' season, but it was by no means the end of their story. 1998 was a banner year for the Jets franchise. The team broke free from years of frustration and played with the skill and the fire that defines a champion. It was a year when the unexpected became commonplace. In week 11, the Indianapolis Colts tried to score on the last play of the half, only to have the Jets' Aaron Glenn turn it into the longest return of a missed field goal in NFL history. Glenn across the 20-yard line. Outside of the 30, reverses back to the left side. He's got a wave. Aaron Glenn on the return. After a missed field goal, he goes 104 yards. Unbelievable. You got to decide which side of that film you're going to be on, whether you're going to be champs or whether you're going to be chump. And you decide, all right? The Jets set a club record with 12 wins in the regular season. And with the number one passing attack in the AFC, they powered their way to their first division title since 1969. Listen to this crowd. They are bananas. And I'll tell you, Jet fans, you got a team you can be very proud of right now. The Jets' 1998 season began under the scorching July sun at their Hofstra University training camp. Coming off a 9-7 season in 1997, their mission was clear. Take another step in 98. Stay up, stay up. Beginning his second season on the job, Coach Bill Parcells had rebuilt the Jets in his own hard-driving image. By the time the team broke camp in August, only 18 players would remain from the 1996 squad that finished with the worst record in football. Parcells had taught the Jets how to win, and with the addition of players like running back Curtis Martin, the coaches were pushing even harder in 1998. You want to go to the Arena League. Play over there. They right, 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 right. Two, go! Parcells' camp was a grueling test of each player's will and endurance. There is no easy way to rebuild a team that was down as long as the Jets. The only way to turn things around is through hard work, 
And last season, no team worked harder than the Jets. The players were tested physically and mentally as Parcells and his staff put their system in place. Backfield coach Maurice Carthon typifies the Jet staff, an experienced group of teachers and winners who own a total of 12 Super Bowl rings. Try to replace the mic. If I see him take it, he goes to the coverage, go right where he left to. Yeah, you should replace him right where he left at, and the quarterback is looking for you, and that look right there. Okay, again. All right, set, go! Inside. Hand behind the back. Go, set, go! Parcells sets the price, and the players paid it every day without complaint. They knew the team had taken a huge step forward in its first year under Parcells, and the long hours on the practice field were the foundation for even bigger things in 1998. As the Jets began their preseason schedule, their fans shared that feeling of confidence. We're dedicated fans. We've had years and years of this, and we're gonna go to number one this year, above the Giants, above Green Bay, above every team in the NFL. This is gonna be the whole season. Curtis, my favorite Martian, okay? He's gonna be the man. The Jets won three of their four preseason games, and Curtis Martin brought a big play spark to the offense. Another free agent addition, quarterback Vinny Testaverde gave a preview of things to come. Good protection from the offensive line, and Vinny T just threw it up there and let Diedrich Ward let him run underneath it for the touchdown. The Jet defense picked up where it left off in 97 as one of the league's best. After years of waiting and hoping, the time had come for the Jets and their fans to share in a very special season. The Jets opened the regular season dressed for success. Look at those unis, Shug. I'm waiting for Joe Namath to come out of the locker room. I like him. George Sauer, Don Mater, Bill Rademacher. The Jets did more than wear uniforms reminiscent of 1968. They attacked the 49ers like the Jets of old. Glenn Foley became the first Jet in 10 years to pass for more than 400 yards in a single game. We got to get some pressure, Pee Wee, on that quarterback, JB. Let's get to that quarterback. Foley goes back to pass. He's got Keyshawn, touchdown! Wide open, Keyshawn Johnson for the second time today. The Jets took the 49ers to overtime, but lost on a 96-yard touchdown run by Garrison Hurst. When the Jets lost again the following week to Baltimore, they were 0-2 and staring into an uncertain future. 96 yards, and the 49ers have shocked the Jets in overtime. You don't know whether you're ever going to win. And that's a tremendous fear. Hey, Pat Riley has it best. Winning and there's misery. That's all there is. Nothing else. The Jets were a desperate team when they faced Indianapolis in week three. With Vinny Testaverde at quarterback, the offense exploded for more than 500 yards, including Curtis Martin's first 100-yard game as a Jet. Testaverde back, sets up the screen of Leon Johnson. Johnson in the clear, 40. Out of a tackle down the sideline. Looking at the Colts in his rearview mirror. Touchdown Jets, Leon Johnson, 82 yards of a play. The Jets overpowered the Colts with 302 rushing yards, and Testaverde passed for four touchdowns as the Jets ran up their highest point total in 10 years. Following the bye week, the Jets were home again, this time facing the unbeaten Dolphins. Johnson slot left, Testaverde on the draw to Curtis Martin to the goal line. Touchdown! Touchdown to Curtis Martin. The hole open big enough. First rushing touchdown of the year for Curtis Martin. The Jets' defense frustrated the Dolphins, 
limiting them to 55 yards through three quarters. You know what the Jets are doing here, reminiscent of Lawrence Taylor and Leonard Marshall. On that right side, Cascadden is actually running a pick on Pleasant's man. He actually blocks Pleasant's offense alignment, so that frees up Pleasant to come around the outside. And he came through, Cox there also, second sack of Dan Marino. This guy came and picked me, and then he came around, but I had seen it late. I, just, I didn't pick it up. The Jets ended a streak of four consecutive losses to the Dolphins by swarming all over Dan Marino, sacking him three times and intercepting three Miami passes. With the victory, the Jets were 2-0 in the division for the first time in five years, and they were building confidence with every step. In week seven, the Jets made their first Monday Night Football appearance in seven years. It was a New England homecoming for Curtis Martin, and the expatriate was greeted with open arms. Martin took the hits, and he hit right back, rushing for 107 yards. That set up the passing game as Testaverde spread the ball around to nine different receivers. The Patriots had not lost a division game at home in four years, but the Jet defense, led by Mo Lewis, changed all that. Lewis sacked Drew Bledsoe twice, and he forced the hurried pass that Aaron Glenn intercepted to turn the game around. The Jets needed a big play, and Aaron Glenn obliged. The Jets mounted a 17-play, eight-minute drive, culminating with Testaverde's touchdown pass to Kyle Brady. That gave the Jets the lead, and on their next possession, they went for the kill and got it. Testaverde back to throw. Drift back, throws the bomb. But Diedrich Ward, who makes the catch, touchdown! Great call by Charlie Weiss, the Jets' offensive coordinator, calling play action. For the Jets, it was a victory worth savoring. Their first fourth quarter comeback win on the road in nine years. The following week, the Jets entrusted the game to their offensive line. Facing an Atlanta defense that was the NFC's best against the run, the Jet line won the battle and the war. Their textbook blocking cleared the way for Curtis Martin to become the first back in more than a year to crack the 100-yard mark against the Falcons. Went off the left side there behind Mawai, and Jumbo just caved it inside, and it was as easy a touchdown as you will ever see. The blocking of Kevin Mawai, Jumbo Elliott and company helped lift the Jets above 500 for the first time all season. Keyshawn Johnson beautifully, he went up high to get it using his athletic ability, pulled it in, and that's a big touchdown by the New York Jets. The defensive line of Ernie Logan, Rick Lyle, Jason Ferguson, and Anthony Pleasant led a pass rush that produced five sacks. They come after the bird, knock him loose. The ball's picked up, going coast to coast for a touchdown. A touchdown for the New York Jets off the fumble recovery by Jerome Henderson. Victor Green knocked it loose. They are very happy. They have, this has become a rout. The Jet defense made another big play the next week in Kansas City. Linebacker Dwayne Gordon made his first career interception and returned it for a touchdown to put the Jets ahead at halftime. Listen to the crowd. It just sounds like a balloon's been deflated. The Chiefs regained the lead, but as they did all year, the Jets battled back to tie. With time for just one more snap, the game rode on the leg of kicker John Hall. Awaiting the snap from center. A 32-yard attempt. The kick is good. Is good. And the Jets knock off the Kansas City Chiefs. And the New York Jets with a big time rude victory at Arrowhead Stadium. In week 10, the Jets returned home to face Buffalo. For the first time in 28 years, the NFL saw a matchup of Heisman Trophy quarterbacks. Doug Flutie of the Bills starting against the fired up Vinny Testaverde. Vinny. 
Once the game began, Testaverde put the hurt on the Buffalo defense, passing for three touchdowns. Great route run by Johnson and a wonderfully thrown ball by Testaverde, who hit him in stride. Testaverde again play action, airing it out. He's got a man, Dietrich Ward. Touchdown, New York Jets. And I'll tell you something, folks. I think the Jets have a quarterback for a few years to come in Vinny Testaverde. The Jets confused Flutie with their multiple coverages, and Ray Mickens came up with his third interception of the season. With the win, the Jets improved their record to six and three. They were tied for first place in the division. There were smiles everywhere. Well, almost everywhere. It tells me that we're six and three. And that's all it tells me. I mean, they're not sending any two dozen roses over here today, and I'm not. If they do, I'm gonna send them back. Oh yeah, that Elton John song to me. He got the words wrong when he meant to say Benny and the Jets instead of Benny and the Jets. The bright lights of New York were a familiar backdrop for Long Island native Vinny Testaverde, who wrote one of the year's great comeback stories. He began the season on the Jets bench and finished as the top-rated passer in the AFC. He was 12 and 1 as a starter in the regular season and was reborn as a primetime player under coach Bill Parcells. He threw 29 touchdown passes, breaking the club record previously held by Joe Namath. Testa Verde laid it right in his lap. Wow. Just an awesome pass to the touchdown. Testa Verde brought the Jets from behind to win three times in the fourth quarter. And his ratio of 29 touchdown passes to seven interceptions was the fourth best in NFL history. Testaverde was one of five Jets selected to play in the Pro Bowl. He was joined by his top receiver, Keyshawn Johnson, who has never lacked for confidence. He can't cover me. He can't cover me. They can't cover me. That's why they want to talk to me and try to distract me, because they know they can't cover me. It's not bragging if you can back it up. And Keyshawn did that in 1998. Time and again, he proved his willingness to make the tough catch over the middle. He teamed with Wayne Crevette to form the best third down receiving tandem in football. He has got the size factor. They line him up outside right, just threw the fade pattern to him, went up and got it. That's a well-designed, well-executed play. Keyshawn's 216 receptions is the second highest total ever for a player in his first three seasons. And his 10 touchdown catches tied for the AFC lead. His career is still in its infancy, but there's no doubt Keyshawn is one of football's rising stars. Curtis Martin made his third Pro Bowl appearance and his first as a Jet. He set a club record with 369 rushing attempts and let nothing stand in his way to a fourth consecutive 1,000-yard season. Blitz being shown, the pitch to Martin. Slipped out of a tackle, down to the 40. He's gone down the sideline, 20. 60 yards and a great run. And it's now over 1,000 yards for the season. Martin also contributed as a receiver. He had 43 catches for a career-high 365 yards. His total of 1,652 yards from scrimmage was the second best in team history. Martin accounted for 86 first downs and scored nine rushing touchdowns, the most by a Jet in eight years. 
Mo Lewis enjoyed the Jets' resurgence more than anyone. He has been with the team eight years, longer than any current player. So he's seen the ups and downs. He had his finest season in 1998, leading the team with seven sacks and raising his career total to 33, tops among Jet linebackers. He was around the football all season, and he was the first Jet linebacker voted into the Pro Bowl as a starter since Lance Mell in 1985. Selected for his second straight Pro Bowl start was cornerback Aaron Glenn. He was the first Jet in a decade voted into the game two years in a row. Glenn was frequently matched up with the other team's best receiver, but he won most of those battles and set a career high with six interceptions. Glenn was also a big playmaker on special teams. He ranked among the AFC leaders in kickoff returns with a 24-yard average. His 62-yard return against Kansas City sparked that come-from-behind win. Five Pro Bowl selections was the most for the Jets since 1985, and a sure sign the team was once again among the NFL's elite. The Jets rolled into December with their confidence soaring. They had won eight of their last 10 games and showed no signs of slowing down. Play action, Testaverde into the end zone, touchdown! He fires all alone, and that was a little too easy. But it didn't stay easy, as Seattle rallied to take a 31-19 lead. Testaverde brought the Jets back throwing a club record 63 passes. He completed 42, one short of the NFL's single game record. Nine of those completions went to Keyshawn Johnson. Testaverde, quick drop, looking left, throwing into the end zone, touchdown! Keyshawn Johnson is 10th of the year, and that is a personal best for KJ. Still, the Jets trailed by six points with time running out setting the stage for one of the season's most controversial finishes. Fourth and goal at the five. Testaverde under center. Takes the snap, quarterback draw. Testaverde to the goal line. Touchdown! One official signal, touchdown to the far side. There's been no signal yet, though, from any official since then. They're all around Testaverde at the goal line. No signal. Touchdown! The headline's been put his hands up and signal touchdown. To me, game set and match, that's touchdown. It was a big win for the Jets, who had to go on the road for the next two weeks, beginning with a Sunday night game in Miami. The Dolphins had not lost at home all season, but former Dolphin Brian Cox made the home field advantage his own. He led a Jet pass rush that sacked Dan Marino five times. The offense kept Miami off balance. For the third straight game, Testaverde was not sacked, and Wayne Krebet recorded his fifth 100-yard game of the season. The tireless Curtis Martin wore down and finally wore out the Miami defense. Go, 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 go. Testaverde on the pitch to Martin running right. Tries to cut back inside the five, touchdown! Curtis Martin with the patience of a saint. He beat Kevin Lawai outside, so he waited for him. And then Lawai buried Derek Rogers, and that's when Curtis Martin turned it back up inside for the nine-yard touchdown run. The Jets led in the fourth quarter and knew, with a win, they would clinch their first playoff berth in seven years. It was up to Bill Belichick's defense to hang on. A lot of time, now in trouble. He's caught from behind. The ball is loose. It is picked up by Chad Kaskett. He goes in for a touchdown. Woo! Touchdown, New York Jets. Chad Kaskett stripped Dan Marino of the football. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. And this crowd at World Players Stadium now on their way to the exits again. For the Jets, there was no time to rest. Just six days later, they were in Buffalo 
with a chance to win their first AFC East Championship. But they had to beat an inspired Bills team to do it. The linebacker, you guys got to take it to him. You know what I'm talking about. Up inside, kick, butt. Bring it on, lay some hurt, whoa. Two old rivals fighting for a division title played one of the hardest hitting games of the year. The score was tied in the third quarter, but once again the Jets dug down for that little extra. Testaverde to throw, looking left, tearing it out. He's got Ward, who makes the grab, and Dietrich Ward's gone. A 71-yard catch and run. A gamble by the Buffalo defense, and Dietrich Ward makes the pay. The defense, which forced at least one turnover in each regular season game, did it again as Victor Green's interception sealed the win and the division title. At long last, the New York Jets had earned the right to be called champions. Certainly, the kids that, that I inherited here at the Jets, I know that's a tremendous satisfaction for them. Here, you tell them to believe in something, and hey, you believe in a program, and if you work and try to achieve, something good will happen. They hadn't experienced it like the Jumbos and the Colin Browns and the Otis Smiths and those kids. And I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you how happy I am for Mr. Hess. We're going to give him the game ball and, and the division championship. And, and I, I just I'm honored to be able to do that. He won the two most important games in pro football history and was the last coach to earn championships in different leagues, towering achievements for this modest man with the unwieldy name. Well, my younger brother tried to say Wilbur, and, and my mother was about the only one that used it. <laughs> and and my, my daughter said, I don't know why Grandma picked that name. Do many people ever call you you Bwebank? Yes, I think they do a lot of times, Billy, but uh, th that isn't the one that bothers me much. It's uh, some of those names they've called me throughout this five years when things didn't go right. That, that bothered me most. Indeed, joyful moments were scarce when Weeb first took over the dreadful Colts in 1954. I think that when Weeb Eubank came in and said it's going to take me five years, I think that Weeb was just saying something to satisfy the sports writers and to pacify the owner because I can't believe that you ever could have projected that that team in five years was going to win, uh, ostensibly, the greatest game ever played. United gives to Amici, the first and world champion, Amici scores! As I look back now, I think Weeb was probably one of the great coaches uh, of all time. He was a good organizer. He spent a lot of time, uh, you know, during practice and a lot of preparation time. He was just like a school teacher. And uh, he did things that, uh, you know, other coaches didn't know about. He had all his halfbacks learn wide receiver positions, because you know at that time we only had 33, 35 guys on the team. So in case anybody went down, we always had backup. And this was through Weeb's genius. Eubank was a calculating man who could also be emotional, something the giant Sam Huff number 70 learned after tackling end Raymond Berry. It was a legal hit. I didn't hurt him. And when I get up, Weeb Eubank punches me and a little guy punched me up on a hip pump. You know, I didn't, I didn't even know, really know what happened. But he was swinging and punching and kicking and trying to get on Sam up. I don't like it. I don't like them trying to hurt our players. But it was Weeb's gentle nature that led to his downfall with the Colts. Weeb was just so nice that what eventually happened, some players start taking advantage of nice guys. That's what happened with Baltimore. Some of the players uh, start relaxing a little more than they should. Fired from the team he had built from nothing, 
We've next revived the woeful Jets with strategies that revolutionized the way linemen protected the quarterback. Coach Eubank had some really good things early on when it came to the passing game and pass protection technique. Coach Eubank believed in not letting our offensive line back, 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 back up. But we believed in taking them on right now, which was absolutely different than the other pass protection schemes. Eubank was equally innovative when it came to dealing with the free-spirited athletes of the 1960s. We was way ahead of his times as far as when people think of him being an old-fashioned coach. We, when it came to the Super Bowl, had the Jet players uh, bring their wives, which no one else had done at that time, to the uh, Super Bowl. And he said, uh, who better to check on the players than their wives? And let's hope the bachelors don't get too lucky. On game day, Eubank eased the pressure on his 18-point underdog Jets with a bold locker room declaration. I said, when we win this game, don't carry the old man off the field. Make a fireman's carry and take me off gently because you sure as hell hurt my hip in the last game. And a lot of guys' eyes popped open when he said that. You know, he didn't say if. He said when we win this game. And that meant a lot to a lot of the players out there that day. It is good footing down there. It is not good footing down. I come back with the same thing. Inside the 10-yard line. Hand off to Snell. He may go. And he's in there. The New York Jets are the world champions in a stunning upset. I've always said that I think Weed Eubank was the finest football coach that ever, ever coached the game. He took two of the worst teams that ever were in the NFL and made them world champions. Now, how much better can you be than that? A trip to Denver and the AFC Championship game is on the line today as the New York Jets host the Jacksonville Jaguars in the AFC playoffs. The Jets hosting their first playoff game here at the Meadowlands since 1986. You ain't scared, are you? No, I'm not okay. scared. Are you scared? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Those guys, they don't respect you. I can tell. They've been reading the papers about your history. That's not very good. All right? You got a chance to write a new page today. For the Jets, the postseason was a whole new season. They had won a club record 12 games in the regular season, but they knew they had to play even better to get past the rugged Jaguars. Testaverde has time into the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown, New York Jets, Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn just ran a post. They got wide open for the 21-yard touchdown, and the Jets take the early lead. They came out throwing as we thought they might. The Jets ran up the second highest point total in franchise history during the regular season. And they put on an offensive clinic in the first half against Jacksonville, building a 17 to nothing lead. The Jets, Keyshawn Johnson, scoring through the air, now scoring on the ground. Wow. A total domination by the New York Jets here. The game plan worked perfectly. The Jets were well ahead with just seconds remaining in the first half. They still count, guys. One more play. They need one more play. Burnell out of the shotgun. Drops back to pass. Steps up. Airs it out. Deep down the middle of the ball. Park down the sidelines. Got a man. And it is caught. It is caught for a touchdown. A touchdown to Jimmy Smith as time expires in the first half. And it puts a pin in what has, to this point, been a perfect first half by the New York Jets. Inexcusable. So at the half, the Jets lead, but their confidence may be a little shaken. The Jets shook off the blow and fought back behind veterans like Curtis Martin, who had been in big games before and knew what it took to win. Determination, execution, and ball control. The Jets held the ball for almost 40 minutes against the Jaguars and expertly mixed the run and the pass. Keyshawn Johnson tied a club playoff record with nine catches for 121 yards. Martin had 36 carries and totaled 182 yards while scoring two second-half touchdowns as the Jets finally tamed the stubborn Jaguars. For the fans who suffer through years of frustration, 
it was cause for joy. The Jets had done more than bring back the uniforms of the past. They brought back the pride as well. The game ended with a desperation pass, and Keyshawn Johnson, making a cameo appearance on defense, came down with the ball. Wow! A memorable first postseason game for KJ. He has scored two touchdowns. He has recovered a critical fumble. He has intercepted a pass. And I suspect he'll be handing out the towels in the locker room after the game. In just two seasons, the Jets had flown higher, flown farther than anyone dreamed possible. They finished first in the NFL's most competitive division, a division that sent four teams to the playoffs. They completed the most dramatic turnaround in league history, from a 1-15 record in 1996 to division champions just two years later. In 1998, the New York Jets gave their fans a season to cherish and a team to be proud of.